Good morning and welcome. I'm Jenny Stedman. I'm the executive director at Aurora. And I'd like to start by thanking the Richard P. Garmony Fund for their support of this event and for our research on women and girls. And I'd also like to thank Lori Robillard for her logistical genius this morning. Um, and our volunteers from Amenta Emma, uh, Deborah Say and Jenna McClure. Today, we're gonna focus on highlighting the release of our newest data. And we produced this in partnership with the Connecticut Women's Education and Legal Fund. Hosting events like today and producing research like this is an important first step, is getting more women seats at the table. We're looking to highlight the need for more women in leadership positions and the benefits to companies and communities when women are in charge. The audience we're targeting goes beyond this room to the hiring managers and decision makers who decides who gets a seat at the table. Listening to the data on the pages in front of us today, I have to say that since I've entered the General Assembly, women have lost ground. Um, I know we are all excited about this surge and certainly things, there are more women stepping up to run, which is a big deal. Uh, but I just was with students at Norfolk School and I went around the chamber and I went, boy, 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 girl, boy, 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 boy. I said, what did you notice? So if you actually look at a uh, percentage of um, college graduates in the U.S. starting from 1940 all the way to 2016, basically for seven decades, seven decades, there were more men graduated from college than women. Men and women will usually draw a man as the leader almost always will draw a man. Even when they say it's gender neutral, the portrait looks like a man. I think it's because the numbers actually are still not in favor of women. So to some degree, it is a reflection mm -hmm. of what we're still seeing in this, in this economy. And even in this late date after, you know, at least my whole career been, women been working on, and we've been working on trying to improve the numbers at the senior levels. Um, in, in all the major positions, in our legislative bodies, you know, in every walk of life. And I, and I think that's probably still, still really a part of it. Look at everybody running for governor. Most of them are men on both sides, and maybe some that have never been into elected offices or not, or run for anything or not. And, you know, a man will wake up and say, I can do this, why not? I'm, I can do this right now, I'm gonna go for it. So whether it's that or a job or whatever it is, where a woman, we tend to say, wait a minute, let me think. Do I have this skill and that skill and I don't have these two, but I have these five, so I'm not there yet. When we talk about looking at leaders and how we perceive things, honestly, when, when you ask, think about a leader, I thought of two things, skill set, I didn't say gender, and then myself. And I think all of us need to think about who is that leader, it's you. You're that leader, and none of us are perfect, and we all have things to improve on, but we're those leaders. You should see yourself in those positions. The fact that we can have a conversation and actually get people to come out on a rainy day and look very pensive and thoughtful about what's being said, my hope is that somebody will walk away from this and figure out, how do I help to support a woman, a girl, a man, somebody at some level to reach the type of parity that we've talked about here today. And it does start with support.